Hello gin lovers and welcome back to No Nonsense Gin Reviews with me, Bobby Freeman. Now then, what, I hear you ask, is that doing on my channel? Because, as you know, uh, or my regular viewers will know, who've seen my original Gordon's Gin Review, I am not a fan of the Gordon's Gin. In fact, I dislike the Gordon's Gin very, very much because it is mass-produced um, rubbish, basically. It's not good gin, but the, the, it's fair enough. If you want to make bad gin, that's fine. and Not a problem. I haven't got a problem with it. Well, I kind of have, but what I have a biggest problem with is the fact that it is everywhere. As I said in my previous video, you can get Gordon's Gin in every bar, in every pub, in every supermarket, pretty much in the world. If there's gin somewhere, it will be there. So a lot of people just think that's the only choice for gin. And as we know on this channel, it most definitely is not. Now then, however, when I did my Gordon's Gin review, I said, I believe at the end of it, try something new, Gordon's. I gave a bit of advice to the Gordon's Gin company, try something new, something different. And they have heeded it. Well, I don't know if they actually watch my um, channel. I doubt it very much. But, um, however, I have discovered uh, this new Gordon's Gin, which is Gordon's with a spot of elderflower, right? Now, one of my friends actually gave me this, so, and they've drunk that much of it, so I'm kind of thinking, well, have they got that far down and thought, I literally can't bear it anymore? Have they got that far down and thought, this is lovely, I'll give it to old Bobby on his gin channel uh, so he can review it? Well, let's find out then, shall we? We've gone into the history of uh, Gordon's before, about uh, Alexander Gordon and his passion for gin. They've been going since 17, 1769, and how they produced... Um, Gin on the, uh, they, they, they founded, the, they founded the distillery on the on the banks of the Thames in Southwark, uh, which apparently was famous for its clean water, despite the Thames being an open sewer at the time. So let's not bother going but all into that nonsense again. Let's uh, crack straight into it, shall we? So let's give this little, I'm, I, it, it's important to give everyone the benefit of the doubt, okay? So I'm going to try my absolute hardest to cast all my preconceptions about Gordon's to aside here, okay, to give this an absolute fair chance, because wouldn't it be lovely, having said all that negative stuff which I did about Gordon's, wouldn't it be lovely if this was a wonderful surprise and was really, really nice? Because I, I, I am sort of slightly, there's a glimmer of hope in there, a glimmer of optimism, because elderflower is a very, very nice flavour. I think I've mentioned elderflower tonic that Fever Tree do. Uh, which I drunk, I enjoyed drinking with the King of Soho gin. And I must say, whenever I've tried anything that's flavoured with elderflower, it's been very, very nice. Very, very nice flavour. So, let's let's see if Gordon's can uh, shake off this uh, neg negative image, which uh, I certainly hold for them. So, let's get the top off the fella. No cork again, so no cork test. Disappointing. Never mind, never mind. So, let's have a... Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh my lord, that oh, that is not a nice <laughs> that is that is not a nice smell, as you probably guessed. Oh my lord, above! Oh, it's got that base sort of um, uh, Gordon's gin scent, which was which I said before, which was just bog standard gin, nothing fancy, nothing out there, just gin. It's got that base in there, but it's like someone's just bolted on. Uh, a whacking, sickly, sweet, syrupy sort of taste. I wouldn't even... I wouldn't even guess it as elderflower. To, or maybe I would. Maybe I would, but like I said, it's a very concentrated, syrupy, oh, oh, kind of kind of a sort of a, a, a pure uh, cordial uh, before it's been watered down sort of smell. Oh Christ! This is not. This is not bode well. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Ne let's let's introduce. Let's well. Let's get some in the glass and then introduce some to the tonic, shall we? If that doesn't sound too pretentious. Uh, there we go. Oh Jesus! Going to be a strong one. Oh God. Right. Okay. Get the old tonic in there because, as you know, this does release the flavours. So I'll pour a decent bit in there because I put quite a bit of gin. Actually, I, I poured like a normal measure, didn't I? Got a bit carried away. What a waste of time. Right, okay, never mind, never mind. Right, let's give this a bit of... Mm, still not great, just a slightly watered down, slightly weaker version of that really strong, bleh, sickly sweet taste. So, let's give this a go. Benefit of the doubt being completely given here. Uh, past um, um, thoughts and negative predictions are cast aside. I'm just trying a new gin. Here we go. Oh my lord. Do you know what? I didn't think it was possible to make a gin worse than the standard Gordon's gin. But you know what? I think they've bloody well done it. it that is extraordinary. It's... Hang on. 
Oh man, it's got that. Yeah, it's definitely even worse. It's that sort of chemically, that real harsh, strong chemically sort of essence that, that the, the original Gordon's Gin had in abundance, which is genuinely just really uh, abrasive and off-putting and just uh, leaves a horrible, swirling, unpleasant sort of scent in the, in the nasal passages as well. But, uh, do you know what? I can't even taste uh, maybe a tiny bit, a tiny smidgen of elderflower type flavour in there. But not really much to set to decide. Maybe I should try it against some... I don't think I've got any Gordons. I think I chucked it away after I uh, after I uh, did the the uh, the review on it. But maybe we should try them side by side. But I can't really taste much difference. It still tastes just exactly the same, but just just as bad. Oh, that's so unpleasant. It's really kind of, it's a real. You know, I talk about balancing flavors. They are not balanced. You've got that standard uh, Gordon's gin taste, but with just a, it feels like it's been bolted on. This flat, this tiny essence, a little bit of elderflower that is there. It's not much. In fact, it, it's, it's something else. It, it doesn't really taste like elderflower. I've never tasted elderflower. Uh, I've never tasted one that, uh, an elderflower drink that tastes quite like that. It's something else. It's some, as I say, I suspect they bought in some sort of. Uh, mass, uh, big package, pre-packaged, artificial, uh, from concentrate, elderflower, uh, syrup, and then just chucked it in, and just thought, oh, sod it, we can't be bothered to make something new or spend a bit of time on it, just whack this, this, squeeze a bit of uh, this in a plastic, you probably rip the top off, one of those sachets, squeeze, like, all this rank, sort of, uh, elderflower jelly into the gin, I bet that's what they've done, because when you taste something like, uh, oh, I haven't got it, it's my, my girlfriend's, the Beef Eater 24, I mean, talk about balanced flavours, and, and the guy, oh, what was his name, Dez, Big Dez, I can't remember his name, uh, their master distiller, um, he spent, how long was it, I think it was 18 months he spent, it locked himself in a laboratory, balancing all these flavours, and the Chinese, sorry, the Indian tea, or Chinese tea, I can't remember, there was tea, definitely some sort of tea in there, and it just, they work in symphony and harmony, and they all sing, and it's just wonderful, that is not a symphony or a harmony, that is like two drunk fat blokes in a pub singing karaoke on uh, a Friday night. It just does not work and no one wants to hear it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Gordon's Gin. Yeah, I don't like to give negative um, uh, reviews on this channel. I like to spread a little joy, but as I said before, I my vow to you is I'm going to be honest. Absolutely honest. And this it's just not great gin. It's it's it, it's based upon gin that's not very good, and they've just whacked a load of flavour into it. So you got a gin that's not very good, that just tastes slightly different. So gin lovers, my top tip today: if you haven't guessed already, please, 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 as always, avoid this gin because it ain't good gin. And as I've said before, if you're on a budget, because I think it's quite cheap, I think it's around about around fifteen pound mark. Get yourself some beef eater because it's exactly the same and it is fantastic, Jim. If you want to stretch a little bit more, go for the beef eater 24. It's around 20, just over 20 pounds, I think. But there are loads that, uh, and even, I, can't, I haven't got all my gins that I'm talking about today, but the Aldi gin that I talked about the other day, Aldi's own Oliver Cromwell gin, it's 10 pounds for God's sake. So I don't know why you would be buying stuff like this when it's genuinely ranked when you can get good stuff for the same price or even cheaper. So, ladies and gentlemen, after that, that's my tirade over. Um, so that was Gordon's Gin with a Spot of Elderflower. Don't like it. Avoid it. Um, this is No Nonsense Gin Reviews, and I'm Bobby Freeman, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.